Welcome to Under Two Capes News. I am Jared. And I'm Vlad. And today we are talking about a topic that's very close to our hearts right now in our hype. It's actually one of our most popular news episodes. We are talking about the recent uh, reveals of the Transformers Rise of the Beast. I'm just going to call it Beast Wars for right now because that's basically what it is. The vehicle modes for the Autobots and Terracons. All right. So let me share my screen and we'll talk about it. So the first thing I noticed is that with Bumblebee, they kept the tradition of constantly changing small details of the Camaro pre-movie. I mean, in between each movie, like at the end of Bumblebee, he turns into the classic Camaro, but it's more of the Camaro that we saw in like the first Michael Bay movie. This one, it's like, let's go off road. Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's really good. Can, can we can you zoom in on it, or maybe yeah, we can uh, yeah, yeah. we can enlarge that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I so dig, I dig oh, the way that uh, this Camaro looks. That looks dope. Yes, yes, and that that's the director, Cable Junior. Uh, I believe RC. Has- as soon as I saw the motorcycle, I was like, oh, they're doing RC, baby. Yeah, I believe that's a Ducati something motorcycle. Ducati. But Mirage. I wonder if they'll do the whole thing where he turns invisible because he does that in the original G1 cartoon. Yeah. And then no. for some reason, Wheeljack is a hippie bus. <laughs> that's kind of funny, actually. But I wonder, I, I, you know, now that you mention it, Bumblebee does look really awesome, like the off-road Camaro, Camaro look for him. Yeah, because, I mean, he's always looked pretty badass, but this, uh, this, uh, this, I think, is my favorite Camaro de- 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 design, I think. Mm-hmm. And I think people are, yeah, and, and people are definitely hyped over the G1 style Optimus Prime there, like yes. really, really classic looking. Yes. Uh, even though... The the movie version of him has really won me over. Also, the you know the trailer style or yeah, I kind of like, like yeah. I, I enjoyed like what the the hot rod flames and the way he did it when he transformed. They turned into ribs. Yeah, that's that's pretty sick. But I'm happy to see right. this Gen One style. Now let me ask you this: Which design for Optimus do do you like more from the Bayverse? The one from Transformers One? Or the one from Transformers 4, the one that basically looks like a samurai. Transformers 4 is unbeatable, the design for him. He's insane. I I do really like the one from 4. Say what you want about the, uh, I guess we'll call them the Transformers sequel movies. But Uh, the designs for those characters were legit. Yeah. No, they look really cool. Another thing I like. I think they, they made Optimus Prime more off-road because he has a roll cage on the front of the truck. He didn't have that in the, at the end of Bumblebee. Mm, yeah, you're right. It, but, it, we, we could be getting... I mean, they are going to be in the jungle at some point, so perhaps they have like a street mode and then they have more of a jungle terrain mode, so maybe that's when that Bumblebee gets this, you know, this off-road style and maybe like the, the you know, that front bumper on Optimus just like comes out of him. That'd be so dope. It would be kind of like in Transformers 3 where all the vehicles had those like basically Warthog from Halo mode where they have all all, all the guns pop out of the cars. Yeah. Yeah, but I I, I just love love this. Everyone else is like badass cars in those Wheeljack. Hippie bus! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wheeljack, that's interesting. I thought it might be like, you know, Ratchet or something like that. But Yeah, and that, now I think about it, it looks like a Ratchet thing. I was wondering, who the hell is that? I only knew it was Wheeljack because I looked at the character descriptions and I'm like, well, that's not Wheeljack. That's definitely Mirage. That There's no way that this is not RC. Yeah, that's an uh, interesting style for RC. She's going to be kind of red. I guess that's Well, she's kind always of been white. kind of... Well, that's kind of more of the modern-ish RC. I mean, they did have the G1 RC, like, model in Bumblebee. Yeah. But I was true. very surprised, but it was kind of cool and pretty nostalgic seeing all the G1 designs in Bumblebee. Right. Right. I was like, no. oh, that's this, so cool. This looks really nice. I love this group shot. They they look very clean, very very nice style, you know, the the coloring on it, like Optimus is coloring on it, that, you know, the streaks of silver look really great. 
it, it, it just it, this this looks like a you know a transformers image right it, it, it's very yeah. nice it looks like what i would arrange with my transformer stories they managed to make the g1 look look cool because i remember right. that was one of that was why they changed all the character designs when they're making the first movie is because they felt it didn't look badass enough this looks dope no this looks great all right no now for here. the terracons all right so i'm guessing that oh. that is scourge that engine that that's it kind of looks like a form that i think megatron had a truck like yeah. that before i was about to say that in transformers 3 I, I, at first, I thought that was Megatron. Then I looked in the design. Oh, yeah, there aren't any Decepticons in this movie. Mm -hmm. Which right there, that, that shows you they're doing something new with Transformers. When was the last time you saw a Transformers movie besides Beast Wars and Beast Machines without the, the, the Decepticons? It's been a while. And then, yeah, so, so there are two more characters. The, the only Terracons I know pretty much are Scourge, and I think there's going to be a, a flying one, but I, I don't know who the hell these two guys are. So I think I was, when I looked at this picture, seeing the car on the bottom left there, that just screams Transformers to me. This like the black yeah. design, but then it has like the orange undercarriage and then those purple rims that just looks exactly like a transformers like from a tv show or from it the does toy, like a it so con. does like, that just yells to me like that's not what you would see like in real life necessarily but it just it looks like a transformer like that the orange wheel trims just are insane i love that it looks so great and do the you, other two also look awesome do you think that the, that the car may be like barricade it could be. Well, well here's I'm, the thing. We're dealing with Terracons and not Decepticons, so we don't know who the... Uh, I have never heard of Terracons, so I have no idea. Besides Scourge, the only time I ever heard of Scourge was in was in Cybertron, and he was an animal transformer. Right. Uh, there, there was a Scourge in... Actually, I'm not sure anymore. because we, It's weird because we have the Predacons, and the terror cons and we might have one decepticon i'm not sure or if they said Maybe. there are no decepticons uh but it's kind of weird that we have predacons and terror cons they said the reason why they're using like the maximals the predacons the terror cons and the autobots is to show that there are like more than two groups on cybertron i see and i, I think the only way we'll see a a Megatron-like character is from the Predacons, because remember, th there was a character who's named himself after Megatron. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think they're going to play it off like the uh, all, all, these three other factions were always on Earth? Or do you think they'll do like a time thing? Because remember, the Maximals and Predacons are technically from the future if they're sticking to the original canon. Right. They could, they could do that. They, they may not, they may not need to do that though, because that was really cool for the TV show that, you know, that expanded lore, but for the movie, they may want to simplify it a little bit anyway, and just say that they were ancient Transformers. Uh, but they what they could do, do what they could do is do it this way. So one of the things I liked about Transformers Prime and like a lot of the recent Transformers content is that they show how there was like a, a lot of of, uh, of factionalism and classism in in Cybertronian society. Hence, which is why Megatron was able to recruit such a large uh, army because they were fighting for freedom. What if the these three factions were just um, banned from Cybertron? Hmm, that makes sense. And they just happen to show up on Earth, and then they could play off the tension between the Autobots and the Maximals. That'd be pretty. That'd be that could be pretty cool. Hmm. Yes, just an idea there. Yeah, that's a good question. Another thing I wonder is, okay, so are the Maximal is gonna be like Autobot size, or are they gonna be like the size of their actual beast forms? Because as you know, weirdly, it's, in Beast Wars they sized up the Autobots like ridiculously tall. To the point where it's right. unrealistic. I'm like, there's, there no, there's no way they're that big. 
if you've seen any pictures from the later seasons, that's kind of what happens. But anyway, be, because I'm wondering, are they just going to be uh, like, ju- like is Optimus Primal j- just going to be a giant robot gorilla? Right. Or they're actually g- going to try and put skin on them. I feel like the robot gorilla is probably going to be the easiest way to do it because that way they don't have to worry about, about the uncanny valley and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's the question. Like, how furry are they going to look? Are they going to look like... I mean, because they did look really like furry in the TV show or in the classic portrayals, right? They wore, like, skin. And even in the Transformers, like, like uh, Jungle one for an uh, uh, um, anime show that's on Netflix, they, they had these skin forms. I see. And also, I, I like how Ron Perlman is voicing Primal. I'm like, yes, he could do it. Yes. I wonder if Peter C- Cullen is doing Optimus, though. <coughs> uh, Peter Cullen? I think they mm-hmm. did confirm Peter Cullen for Optimus already. Yes. Yes. Because it was but... jarring in the, in the Netflix show to not have Peter Cullen play Optimus. Right. I was like, wait, what? No, this is this is uh this is pretty crazy. And I, mean, I was I, fine with, with, with who they cast because it basically sounded like the guy from Armada. So I was like, okay, that's cool because that was my optimist growing up. Yeah. No, this is this is uh really good. You know, this is like a kind of like a progress update. We're starting to get a little bit of news as they're developing it. And it's cool to see, you know, the Transformers official page and, uh, you know, the director here post these images of, you know, various Transformers characters we're seeing so far. They're obviously keeping some of the animal characters hidden for the time being. They want us to, I guess, see how it's going to look like. But I, I would guess that we're going to get like a reveal of the Beast characters in the trailer. And I think what's going to happen is that the trailer is going to play off like a normal Transformers movie. They'll uh, they'll pl- reference that there are other groups of Cybertronians, and then the last shot of the trailer will be a uh, group shot of the Maximals. I see. That'd be interesting. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, as it says, there are no Predacons have been revealed yet, so we are so we don't know exactly who they're going to use. My guess it would be like like Megatron. Although, can they make him turn into a T Rex? Good question. That's the thing, though, because I'm like, wait a second here. Because <laughs> they're not going to be able to hide. Yeah. Uh, or what I'm they could sure. do, what they could do is make it so it's like an urban myth that there's like a, a, a dragon or like a monster that, that stalks these hills in Peru. And then it's just T-Rex Tron, essentially. R- right. Yeah, that's a good question. How they're gonna do some of them? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, here's a question: Do you think they're gonna make them small, like animal size, or they're gonna be that's like re- really huge? Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. I think honestly, I don't think you, that they're gonna make them animal size because that would look stupid compared to them. Okay, but what if they were like? bumblebee size not so not as tall as optimus and some of the others but you know, maybe like you know megatron can be that tall but or do yeah you think i would say like huge? i'd say probably b size maybe not even b size because remember he's small for a cybertronian that's true i would say probably a I would say shorter than Optimus, but taller than Bumblebee. Because Bumblebee was, like, really short. If you saw him at the end of the, of the Bumblebee movie walking next to Optimus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah, but anyway, I really... Uh, I'm sure, I am very excited for this movie. It looks dope. Yeah, no, this, this looks really great. It's good to see the progress updates. And yeah, it's getting hyped for like a trailer announcement or something. Uh, I guess they're just, you know, they're working on the filming and do some of the, the animation and everything. But yeah, that looks really good. I think they'll, they'll do a teaser like a year out or so, I'd say. Or maybe like, yeah. maybe closer to like D23 
December is when I think we'll get a trailer or a teaser or anything like that to, to get people hyped. Right. I don't think said, they'll pull a Spider-Man. We said for this movie, remember, it's coming out like really soon, right? Next remember year, saying, next like June. Yeah. So we, yeah, we definitely have to have a trailer by this year. Yeah, it's coming June 24th, 2022. Hmm. No, that, that seems cool. Apparently, there's going to be an animated prequel as well set on Cybertron. Yes! Really? There's a bunch of other projects. Yes! That's good to know. That's going to be dope. I'm so excited. So basically, if you're a Transformers fan like we are, we got a lot of great co content to look forward to. I'm really excited. Yeah, because uh, in the next, we're gonna over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be reviewing some Transformers series. I believe that's yes in the works. We're gonna be talking about Beast Wars, G One, Line, Unicron trilogy, all the good stuff. We're gonna cover some some of our favorite eras. Get hyped up. Unicron, the new tri Unicron trilogy, even though they don't take place one after another. I mean, <laughs> Armada and Cybertron do, although they they never explain why everyone looks radically different than they did in Armada. Or then again, why everyone is cool with Transformers and Energon. I'm like, wait a second, guys. It's because it's an anime, that's why. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but anyway, all right. So guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the, this episode of Under Two Capes News. Lad, always a pleasure. Uh, stay yep. at work, everyone. Ha, ha, have a good week.